Okay. Good day and good morning. Uh, welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar hosted by us. Um, it will be an exciting morning. Uh, we are joined. My, my name is Anthony. Um, I, I will be your host for today's uh, webinar itself. And joining we, me to, in today's webinar's presentation, I have Bhavani, uh, Harris, and Kashyap. These are the teams is behind the, the interesting technology that you see in the demo today in terms of how we can use uh, AI to unlock the power of your healthcare, healthcare data. Okay. So the agenda for the day will help us going, go through, uh, we'll do a quick introduction to Napier Healthcare, um, and then we will do a introduction to Napier AI, our full portfolio AI solution, and then we'll zoom down to the conversational analytics uh, solution as part of the AI portfolio. And uh, definitely all of us will look forward to a fantastic demo by the team. Uh, Harris will walk you through how the system using natural language will be able to reach deep into the data that you are collecting today and give you the insight to help you make better business decision. Uh, we do some Q&A and in between uh, the presentation, we will also run some polls. Look forward to your contribution to the polls to get some ideas and uh, feedback in terms of where are you in the AI journey and the plan for the AI today. Okay. So Napier Healthcare has been uh, focused in the healthcare industry. Uh, our vision is how we can continue to use technology uh, as innovatively to address different healthcare touch points. We are one of the few provider of healthcare solution uh, that cuts across multiple care points. We focus in not just in solution for hospital, from an operation and clinical perspective, but we also offer solutions uh, that caters for the long-term care sector, as well as for clinic. And in, in some cases, uh, we do reach out into the sort of non-traditional healthcare sector like aviation. Our mission is to help you to make a difference uh, that you can provide better care and better quality engagement with your patients and your client and to leverage the power of mobility and the cloud to achieve your mission and our mission as well. So our solution aims to transform your operation, inspire care, and also to transcend boundaries uh, where you can basically do not limit your delivery of your care services to within only within the four walls of your hospital, of your facilities, but beyond that as well. Uh, we are a company, the headquarter in Singapore, with our presence in multiple, geog in multiple geography. Uh, we, we have a presence in Australia, India, Malaysia, uh, Saudi Arabia, and UAE, and an install base even as far as Tanzania. Uh, we like to say we achieved good success in the last two to three years, being recognized by the national Singapore National IT Healthcare excellent award for solutions we have deployed. Uh, we see cloud as a future and cloud will provide the visibility and the speed and ability for healthcare provider to change uh, with the dynamic uh, landscape. Uh, we, we strive to make sure that we deliver products off standard and to get those standard address and, uh, and recognized by bodies like ISO. Uh, we've been receiving recognitions from peers as well as third party pro analysts in the marketplace like class uh, which has which has marked us as one of the leading global EML provider uh, in the Asia market okay so talking about industry recognition and to ensure we deliver product that meets the standard or requirement of the healthcare industry uh, we have subject ourselves to go through some of the certification that's related to developing and delivering healthcare solution. Okay, so you can see here the different ISO certification that Napier Healthcare has attained through the years, and we continue to uh, go through this certification to renew our certification uh, for these standards that we have seen here. And one of the important standards you see that 
we have passed is really the uh, to ensure that the product that we deliver solutions that will deliver offer you uh, ability to protect the PII information if you host it in public cloud. The solutions we offer today cut across multiple touch points. Uh, as I earlier alluded to, we are one of the few uh, IT healthcare provider today that have a system that addresses across the multiple care continuum. We believe and we see that over time, uh, that the different touch point across the multiple care continuum will come together and ability for healthcare provider to get information uh, and to be able to share information across this multiple touch point so that the best care, if can be given to the patient is very important. And not forgetting today we are focused on is really uh, how AI technology can basically helps you drive forward in your mission or vision to deliver uh, the best care and the best patient engagement possible uh, for your client. Okay, um, I would like to maybe quickly run a poll here and to see where are we in this uh, journey. You see a poll coming in your screen. Um, hopefully within the next we will continue while the poll runs. Uh, I hope you have time, uh, take your time to go and provide us some feedback or input into the poll, right? I'll share the poll result uh, in the next 30 seconds or one minute. An introduction to Napier Healthcare and uh, Napier AI. Uh, we see AI not, not has the technology to take over or to make decision be on behalf of business decision maker, nor the clinician. We see AI has a tool that will complement uh, the work of a clinician and not work as a replacement, okay? Uh, because what makes us different as human is really our intelligence and AI actually extend our capability by enabling uh, find information data for us to help us to use our intelligence to make that decision. So we see AI has an extension of that quality as well as not a replacement of current um, way we are working today, but is to help the way we work. And the approach to AI is to be able to look at the different use cases that AI may help you within your organization environment. Uh, we, we tend to start small, um, and then uh, to scale up fast, right? And this approach that we, we take as well as we launch our AI um, solution and working with providers uh, to how to adopt AI and then how we able to scale up AI quickly within the organization. Uh, thanks for your poll. So uh, what we are seeing is from the poll result, um, what we see that uh, there's equal number of uh, organization individuals indicated they are using uh, SQL uh, and tool like Tableau or Power BI or ClickView to actually extract and analyze data. All right, thank you very much for your participation. Uh, there'll be another poll coming up later. I'll share the result for the poll. You, you will be able to see it uh, on your screen. Okay. Moving on on the presentation itself. So we see that we can use AI to transform your business, right? By combining not just uh, using AI to get more insights in terms of data that you have collected uh, within your organization. Okay. So where, where artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used to extract those information, to look at trends, uh, so to enable you to make better data-driven decision. And some of it may be around uh, epidemic prediction in the future with the current COVID-19 situation. Um, is there any clinical or administrative risk predictor that can we develop by using AI or ML to look at data that you have and also potentially give us a alert on potential quality issues. 
these are where we see by using data and using the AI and ML capability allows us to bring more insights into your organization to enable you to make better decision or to help you to make better decision or to support your better your decision making process. So from a Napier artificial intelligence perspective, we have now developed different use cases. Uh, while today we are focusing on what you see on the bottom right hand side on conversation analytics, uh, but we have developed uh, different use cases for AI using the engine that we have. Uh, we have a screening uh, x-ray, chest x-ray uh, screening uh, AI tool. Uh, this will enable uh, to improve productivity with your radiologist as we highlight um, key x-ray that they may need to uh, look into first versus uh, those who are normal. So we, we actually improve productivity, help you to make better decision in the area. Uh, the other way of using AI is that has part of the admission process, there's always a need to predict the length of stays. Uh, by more appropriately or more accurately predict the length of stay based on the different cases that you have, your historical data, we hope to improve the operational efficiency of the uh, hospital management and enable you to optimize the utilization of the bed within the hospital itself and improve uh, patient engagement. Uh, we look at chatbot has a potential uh, approach for a interface into an application. Uh, traditionally, most of the application in healthcare has been very much uh, either keyboard centric or using a computer on wheels, but are we able to use a chatbot or mobile, combining with a mobile tablet or mobile device has a front end interface into a uh, healthcare application or hospital information system? So we are able to do that today with the NAPI Assistant Chatbot that we've developed, uh, improving um, experiences in entering data into EMR. Uh, we've developed an uh, interactive EMR concept and approach that uh, will continue to deepen and further enhance it. And last but not least, today we'll look at conversational analytics. Okay, um, a quick Poll again, second poll. I'll launch a new poll where where, where do you see uh, your focus for uh, AI solution? If there's a need for AI, where do you think your organization will be focusing on using AI? Looking forward to sharing your information and feedback from the uh, audience uh, as we go through, continue to go through. So, a introduction to conversation analytics, and that's what the focus of today's webinar will be. Um, and the key thing about this conversation analytics is how we can now use your natural language to bring out the information or the data they have collected within your system itself. Okay. Uh, we're all very used to uh, the business intelligent tools like Tableau, ClickView, or even uh, pivot, pivot Table using Excel spreadsheet. But are we able now to use uh, ML-powered automated insights as well as intelligence and understanding natural language to enable you to surface up the data that you need in a much and easier way, right? Um, so the NAPI Assistant conversion, Conversation Analytics uh, strive to achieve that, to make it easy for you to find the information that you need instead of going through a uh, front-end tool to organize the data that you need. The tool will very quickly, based on um, the question that you ask, it learns, has, has it, it will learn to understand the question you're asking and then retrieve the information that you need, right? And it is a solution that can be run on a desktop using a web browser or access through a mobile app 
and it can be a mobile web app or it can be integrated even with MS Team to enable you to access the information. Okay, uh, it is ability to even provide quicker insight with guided information, meaning giving you an idea of um, what are the different questions you can ask and what kind of information that they can retrieve from the rich data sets that you already have, right? Um, and how we highlighted earlier on that it is really starting small and not to uh, and scale from uh, a small footprint in, into a larger use cases. So one of the goal for us is to work with you on the different use cases and scale up the, the number of use cases that you find that will be useful for your organization, right? Uh, and it's really an insight uh, that tell your stories. Um, later on, when Harris do the demo, you see how easily that the data will be presented to you in a format or in a way that best represent the data. And it intelligently also gives you the option to choose the best way that the data can be, can be represented and can be presented and be shared, okay? Um, beyond that, uh, not only that the data can be consumed by you as an individual, but the data can be shared across the different individual within your organization that you like to bring into a conversation and to be able to collaborate effectively using the data that, using the information that you retrieve from the system using the conversation analytics. And that can lead to better decision making and help you to collaborate in real time. And what, uh, what it brings to you is the ability for, for different individuals to drill down the data and look at the data from different perspective and bring greater insight and understanding of uh, the data that you have to help to make better decision within your organization. Let me look at the poll result now. Um, we see a high percentage of uh, attendees who are saying that um, the focus is a lot of focus on investing AI for clinical. Uh, and second, sec the second uh, biggest use cases they see is really in uh, business decision making. Right? I I'll leave the result out there for a while for you to consume and to look at it while I move to the presentation again. A quick view of the architecture of deployment. This may not be interest to you, but uh, what I want to share that the the solution can be deployed on premise, okay, or uh, the flexibility you get to deploy on cloud, right? And we will have an AI engine here that will connect uh, to your data source, and based on that, it will deliver the result back back to the users securely. Uh, for excess of cons consumption. So there's no limit in, in terms of uh, where the data can be accessed, where the conversation can happen, right? Um, so hope this gives you an idea in terms of the flexibility of deployment for the solution. Another poll question before we go into a demo itself. The third question for the day. And I see there is, a, let me check any Q and A question at the current moment. While, while we wait for the poll result. There's no, there's no question that has been posted on, onto the chat here, or nobody asking question.
Okay, I'll end polling. Um, 63% says that they have a plan to deploy AI solution within a year. Uh, and we have about 25% who say they have a plan within three months. Fantastic. Okay, I'll end the polling. I'll share the result. Uh, and I'll move on to pass on to my colleague, uh, Harris, to take you through the demo. Harris, over to you. Uh, thank you, Anthony. Uh, let me share my screen. Just before the demo, let us have some information from uh, Gartner, what he's telling about the future in conversational analytics. 2.5 quintillion bytes of data are generated every day. And 73% of data collected by organizations is not used for decision making. 30, less than 35% of the interested users actually adopt BI tools, according to Gartner. Business users can consume data in natural language without any technical support. Data is always available. Business continuity, even in extraordinary situations like COVID, enables man hour saving and resources can be repurposed for more productive activities. Investments of years on data infrastructure is monetized by enabling the consumption of data collected. Natural language processing based querying across different databases. NLP that understands the language of your business. Time to value, faster and accurate analytics, faster decision making and faster time to market. Let us have some info before we going, go directly into the demo. We have two use cases, revenue reports and bed occupancy chosen for showcasing the ability of the conversational analytics. Revenue analysis is based on and not limited to the below dimensions, patient type, payment type, payment through insurance company, revenue services categorized as service groups like surgeries, investigations, et al. And from bed occupancy, bed occupancy rate is a metric commonly used to examine the hospital's inpatient capacity being utilized for inpatient care. It represents the percentage of a facility's beds that are occupied on average each day of specific period being studied. We have taken up some sample data, want to run through what kind of data we have. We have mocked up HIS data based on 125 bedded hospital comprising of outpatients inpatients and pharmacy. And we have taken the data for a duration of about 10 months. The volume of transactions across patient registrations, admissions and discharges and billing is about 50K. What are we going to cover in this demo? NLP based data exploration, voice based data access, simple and complex questions, visual drill down and analysis capabilities, multiple visualization options, pin to play and scheduled reports and collaboration. With this info, let us jump on to the demo.
let me log in to the Napier Assistant, which is our conversational analytics tool we have. I have just logged into the application. I'm jumping on to a channel and creating a thread to do our analysis, naming it as Napier Analytics. Okay, let's see what is revenue reporting. The amount of hospitals bills over what they receive have increased dramatically over the last few decades. How much revenue an hospital generates is one of the most important metrics every healthcare industry would focus on, even if it is a nonprofit organization. A revenue report shows the total amount of income generated for various services rendered. It can be generated for any specified duration like monthly, quarterly or yearly. Finance reports that shows figures for various dimensions like patient type, there is inpatient, outpatient, etc. Or payment type, there is payment through cash or credit card or debit cards or pay type is amount paid by the patient or by the company or service groups would give actionable insights for the decision maker. Managing the revenue reports through conversational analytics is very, very convenient. You can see the revenue through simple conversations which we use in day-to-day -day life, like revenue this year. Let's see how to get this through this tool. Revenue this year. I just voiced out just revenue this year. It gives me a simple markup text, $12.72 million. Certainly, we'd like to drill down this figure to get more insight to understand on which months of this year the revenue is more or on which month it dips. Breaking up this figure is very easy by simple conversations as we use in our day-to-day -day life, like by month, which picks up the context of the previous question and gives the result. Let's see this by month. It gives me a suggestion to refine and further group monthly. Picking up the suggestion, I'm getting a line chart. Working in this space for a long time, generating a similar code or a script and drill it down to further requires syntactic and semantic knowledge of the query and also some more time to visualize the result into a chart. Conversational analytics, it takes a couple of minutes, a few seconds to accomplish the same task. Very convenient language. We can configure the phrases we use in daily conversations in this tool and make the bot understand the conversations of our choice. Often finance personnel would like to break down this monthly figure further to know from which source you earn most of your income and from which source the least. This helps you to understand and take corrective measures to focus on the cause for the increase or dip in revenue on that month or week. Revenue this year by month by patient type. You can type another query or refine your previous point. Getting a line chart, you see one line for the inpatient and one line for the outpatient, another one for the pharmacy revenue. 
Many a time we analyze or understand which mode of payment is preferred most by the payer. Or how much is paid in cash by inpatient or outpatient this year? This helps us to take appropriate steps if necessary to ease the mode of payment or how much revenue is flowing into the industry in which mode. Revenue this year by payment type and patient type. You can type another query or refine your previous one. You are given a heat map having the payment type on x-axis and patient type on y-axis. Finance planners analyze which hospital department makes more money or it can also be the least money so that you can take decisions like is it really necessary to sustain the department or like why revenue is less in that department and take steps to provide more facilities to attract more patients. Revenue this year by service group. You can type another query or refine your previous one. Revenue across the service groups is displayed in bar chart and you can analyze accordingly. What is the revenue generated by a particular department or service group this year or last year? Or in a specific period is also the question that is raised often on our minds. Take for example, the surgery department. Revenue in surgery service group this year. or what is the most preferred payment type in the service group or how much of it is collected by cash or card. Revenue with service group surgery by payment type. You can type another query or refine your previous one. There are more areas where conversational analytics is handy and convenient. Like one of the physician specialities that generate most revenue and which doctor account for the most of the income for the industry or which class of beds generate most revenue in the hospital, revenue through cash versus insurance claims or which hospital in your healthcare chain generates more revenue and gain actionable insights on demand for quicker decision making by collaboration with your team. Let's move on to the next use case, bed occupancy. Bed occupancy rate is also known as bed utilization rate. Is one of the high level indicators of a hospital success. It is a measure of utilization of the available bed capacity. It represents a percentage of facilities beds that are occupied for a specific period of time. What does the bed occupancy rate indicate? What inference do I get from this metric? Target bed occupancy rates have been proposed as a measure of the ability of a hospital to function safely and effectively. High bed occupancy rates have been shown to be associated with greater risks of hospitals associated infections and access block and have a negative impact on staff health. How do you calculate the bed occupancy rate? For example, to calculate the occupancy rate of a 100-bedded hospital 
say for the month of April, the total bed days available in April is 3,000. That is 100 beds for each day for all the 30 days. Let's have the total bed days occupied in April is 2,250. Then the occupancy rate would be 2,250 upon 3,000. That is occupied beds upon the total available beds multiplied by 100, that is 75%. Using simple conversations, we will see how we get the result using the data generated by the hospital's day-to-day -day operations. Let us converse. Bed occupancy rate this year. You can type another query or refine the previous one. Shall we get further insight into this data to check in which month or week of the year the occupancy rate is the highest or the lowest? Refine and further group monthly. Picking up the first suggestion, it gives me the occupancy rate on a monthly basis. Or to get the occupancy rate for every bed class, like ICU, special beds or semi-special beds or twin sharing, by class. Grouping this further by class, I get a table chart. There are a variety of options to change the chart type. Now you get a line chart for every class of bed, the occupancy rate. You can see in some months, the occupancy rate is low. Why the hospital bed occupancy rate is decreasing? You can link this to the outpatient services or revenue generated during that period. There's a growing trend towards consumer use of outpatient services, which tend to be less costly for patients. This can be the only one reason why hospital bed occupancy rate are decreasing. We saw the bed occupancy rate for each class. Bed occupancy rate can be linked with a class of bed. Whether a bed is occupied or not, it is always linked to your class. That is for a particular bed class, how much percentage of it is occupied but we cannot see the bed occupancy rate for speciality or doctor because the unoccupied beds are not attached to these dimensions. But within the occupied beds, we can get insights relating to the speciality or doctor. Out of the occupied beds, how many are attached to a specific speciality or doctor? or how much are occupied in each bed class? Let's converse. Total bed occupied by class this year. Sorry, I was not able to understand that. Total beds occupied by speciality this year. Total beds occupied by specialty this year. General medicine has taken most of the percentage, followed by gynecology and pediatrics. Let us see the same analysis for class.
total bed occupied by class this year? Out, out of the occupied beds, general category tops the list. Or how many of the occupied beds are attached to each doctor? Total bed occupied by doctor this year? You can type another. Dr. Madhukumar is the one who admits most of the patients. Let us get further insights. Which class of bed is used by which doctor the most? Total bed occupied by class by doctor this year. You can type another. You get a table chart because the number of rows generated are more. You can sort and get the most appropriate requirement. When the data is small, we get table charts. But when we group appropriately, we get a decent visual that makes us to comprehend easily. Total bed occupied by class by specialty this year. You can type Converting the table chart into a stack bar, adding the label, you can see out of the total on the general beds, it is split across various service groups or departments. This kind of visualizations help us to understand very quickly and easily through conversational analytics. All these questions which I spoke through or conversed through voice is not the only option. We have facilities or options in this tool to do this manually. Let me demonstrate this. Revenue this year. Whatever output you get can be magnified and added to a special place in the thread called board. All your conversations to this bot happens through threads. And each thread has got a special place to selectively choose and store all your outputs, which is called board. I've taken this figure inside board I want to group this manually according to the dimensions I like to. Revenue this year. If you want to categorize this by month, I can say monthly manually over here, apply the changes and you get the chart. A lot of chart options are highlighted, which can be switched over to taste, to according to our taste. Out of many chart options, some are highlighted, which shows that these charts are only possible, the available data coming out of your query. Out of the available chart options, still you have option to choose which is the best. What is being shown here on the right hand side, you have a bar and every chart option has got a bar which shows the usability or the capability of using this chart. Line chart and area chart are used to show that these are the best chart options that you can do. To further group this down, 
by some other dimension. By patient type, apply the changes. So we have brought the same kind of graph using manual method. Still you have options, switch over to stack bar and add the labels. More presentable and understandable. Another great advantage of this tool is that you do not need to prepare a presentation before a meeting. All the visuals that you have collected over a period of time or through your hard analysis in this board can be directly moved to your presentation mode. Coming to this thread, which has got already a variety of charts available, I can click this presentation icon to move to the presentation mode. Before any board meeting or any management meeting, you can just click onto the presentation mode and move over the slides. It can play automatically or it can be triggered manually too. Before the presentations, you can refresh the data and get the latest information on the data on that specific time. Finally, the another big advantage of this tool is that we can collaborate with our peers or management to analyze the data and get the best out of it before making any decisions. This is possible through custom channel. I want to converse to my colleague, Bhavani, as I don't know anything about revenue to find out what could be the revenue this year? When I converse through custom channel, I should specifically direct my questions to the user to whom I am intending this question. The moment I shoot the question, it reaches Bhavani on the other side. The question is only directed to her because she is also a part of this collaboration thread channel. So I'm expecting a reply from her based on which I can drill down the output further. Just thanking Bhavani as in the case of normal chat. And directing my next question to the bot. It picks up the result of the previous question and drills it down for every month. Another major advantage of this tool, whatever report you have on your board, having lot of visualizations can be downloaded into a single PDF. Once the PDF is downloaded, it can be attached to any recipient through email. Individual visits, visuals on this particular board also can be downloaded in the form of image or PDF or in the form of a CSV file, which will not contain an image, but the actual data. 
This information on the board can be sent to the management or a peer group by creating a report. It can be sent as a single report or it can be scheduled to be sent on each day on a specific month or a week on a specific time. I'm just choosing Bhavani to send the report. I'm scheduling it daily or weekly on all Mondays at 9 a.m. through an email like Like any subject, and a normal male body, just save and schedule. The report did just uh, quickly, without any effort, every time to send. It picks up. It picks up the data at that point in time when the report is generated. And she has got the report every week with the latest data. In summary, we have a variety of features that makes our decision making process very easy through conversational analytics. Thank you all very much for your valuable time. Over to Anthony. Hey, thank you, Harris. Thank you for, for the great demo. I hope everybody's um, in attendance today. Enjoy, enjoy the demo uh, that Harris has gone through. Uh, please feel free to share with us any question you may have. Uh, you can ask it in the chat on the Q&A Q &A session. Uh, as we move along, we're coming to the end of the the session, uh, but before we go, we, we want to run uh, two more poll questions and also share with you uh, potentially uh, some of the interesting way you can participate or be part of this program and how you can get on board uh, to this program itself. Okay, so for, first and foremost, uh, hopefully we can get your evaluation in terms of whether the webinar uh, meet your expectation. Okay. I'm going to minimize this so it doesn't block the. Um, so next step uh, has to spend this one hour with us. I hope that the information that we provided to you gives you an idea on the capability of uh, an API system conversation analytics, and you can see the value that this will bring uh, to your organization in terms of helping you to get uh, insights uh, from the amount of data that you have. So uh, one of the initiatives we like to offer for the attendees for this webinar is that we're offering a free POC for the first five organizations that is interested. There's no commercial obligation after the POC itself. Uh, POC can be based on the current use case we have or proposed use case by yourself, uh, what you think will be most useful to you. Uh, we can run a POC for a period of uh, two months. Uh, if you're interested, we can set up a call to explore further uh, and to discuss in more details how we run the POC. Uh, please send your email to info at napierhealthcare.com. Uh, my suggested subject heading is uh, Napier Assistant Conversation Analytics uh, POC. Okay, uh, so in that email itself, you provide the name of a contact person, company email address, uh, phone number for us to reach back and schedule an initial call. Okay, so hope uh, this, this will, will help you to uh, plan your next step. And it is like what we say earlier on is AI is really taking each small step at, at a time. 
uh, and not really going for big bang. And as we build up based on these small steps, we can scale this uh, across the organization. Yeah. Uh, thanks for those who have responded to the poll. So we, we have, uh, for those who responded, um, a lot of people has given us 100% uh, that it meets the expectation. Okay. I uh, see there's a question that comes in. Uh, we'll ask for sharing the recording. Uh, yes, we will we'll find a way to share the recording with the attendees. Okay. And one last poll uh, before we close for the day is how is your AI today? Uh, how much time does it take you to get insights from your data uh, based on whatever system uh, that you have? Uh, thank you very much for all the attendees and your time. I uh, thank you for the team. Uh, we look forward to a future webinar. I hope you will um, you you join us for our future webinar, and we'll be in touch. Uh, and we will also be in touch to to see how we can share uh, the recording for today. If there are no other question, uh, thank you very much. We look forward to our next webinar uh, in time together. And the last poll that I come up, I will share the last poll and then we can close uh, today's webinar. Uh, wishing you a good day ahead and um, hope we get some time to meet soon, uh, either virtually or through another webinar in person. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good day. Thanks all. Thanks everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.